what we're gonna be using right now is a sponge brush for the background color. And we're gonna apply it really quickly. And uh, if, if you're doing this at home or if you're gonna do this at home, do your edges first. I'm gonna do my edges after the live because it just takes um, uh, too much time and I can go back and do those, okay? So go ahead and do your edges with this dark navy or the um, deep midnight blue. And, and then we're gonna do our entire, this is so crooked and it's driving me crazy. We're gonna do our entire canvas in the deep midnight and then we're gonna come in with our big old fatty palette knife and add additional color while that blue is still wet. So you wanna go ahead and, uh, you wanna go ahead and do your edges first so that you're not um, in a rush on the very top. Bonnie, the, sun, the glass sunflower was like a year and a half ago and it is on this site, Art Shattered. You'll just have to click on videos and I think there were two or three different videos, so you'll just have to kind of peek through, but it's about a year and a half ago, and uh, they're on this page on, under videos. Hey, Kelly Coker, how are you? So, you know, normally I will start with white, but we're not doing that today. We are gonna start with the midnight, the, I'm sorry, with the deep midnight blue, and I am literally gonna just squirt it on my canvas for efficiency, okay? And then I'm gonna use my little sponge brush to um, cover my entire canvas. So we're gonna try to do this efficiently. And that means quick. <laughs> so I wanna get it all on here. And hopefully that's enough. So just brush it on, cover your entire canvas. And I want to go um, somewhat fast. I don't want to dilly-dally because I do want the blue to blend in with the next colors that we're going to apply. I don't want it to be dry. So, <laughs> yeah, that was a year and a half ago. That was before I even moved back to, to Mississippi. That was when I was still in Georgia. Probably almost two years. Okay. I'm gonna kinda get down onto my edges a little. All right, so I'm gonna go back and forth. Make sure it's all covered. I'm gonna toss this aside. And I see a little spot. And now what I'm gonna do is use my other colors, okay? And the first color I'm going to use is the uh, Midnight Blue. Actually, I'm not. I'm gonna use white, okay? And here's how this is gonna work. I am going to just squirt it, and I'm gonna use this to spread, okay? So I'm going to, I wanna make sure there's plenty in the middle. And then I'm just gonna make a few lines and then I'm gonna use this palette knife, the uh, low power, low battery. I'm gonna use the bottom of my palette knife to just kind of blend this in, okay? Now you're not scraping. You're not gonna be like scraping really hard with your edge, okay, like this, and scraping paint off. You're just lightly, like butter and toast. Just lightly blend. Might need to add, I might add a little too much white, but that's okay. So I'm just laying it out flat. I think I'll add a little bit of the uh, regular midnight blue, which is kind of a brighter blue. We'll add some of that in. And if we need more, hey Susan, if we need more um, navy, color will do that too. So just a few spots here and there, and I'm just gonna blend that the same way. That was excessive, that's all right. Here's the great part about doing something like this. If you get it over blended or if you don't like it, just stop what you're doing 
let it dry, and then you can come back and do another layer. That's a little too much of that uh, bright blue for me. I'm gonna add just a smidge more of the Deep Midnight in a couple of places. Ooh, my chair popping. And we're just blended in. And just you're just using the flat of your palette knife, this big O knife, just lift it up enough that it doesn't stick and blend. All right, that was, I think I need a little more white now. So I'm just gonna keep going until I like it. So I'm gonna put a little white here, a little white here. Okay, so we're just gonna dab until we're done. And I do have another color I'm gonna incorporate. And see, and I've not even cleaned off the back side of my knife yet. And if you find that you have too harsh of a line, like say this darker blue line right here, pull it downward, okay? Pull it up and then down and then come back across. There's no wrong way, honestly. All right, I'm gonna wipe this off now. I am gonna use my tropical blue, which is like the fantastical color. Yes, yes, Karen, it is. This, I did get this in the paint department at Hobby Lobby, but it does look like a cake spreader, doesn't it? So I'm gonna add a little bit of this uh, brighter blue in a couple places, right here and maybe right here, and maybe just a dollop here. This is a strong color, okay? So we're gonna just pull it lightly. We're not scraping. We're not scraping the paint across. I'm gonna come, I'm gonna come down a little. You're not using the edge of the blade, you're using the flat surface, okay? So just pull that through, love this color. Now you see how I made a hard line? See that? So all I need to do is come in and just pull up and down and that'll help rectify that situation. All right, now because, ugh, I'm gonna wipe that off and my wings are gonna be like this and uh, we're gonna have something in the middle. So I'm gonna take a little bit of white and just right in the center there, not too much, I'm gonna add a little white and I'm going to just, oh, there's a big old white nasty thing. Hang on. I'm gonna blend a little bit of that white in. That sucks, hang on into the center so it's a little bit lighter there. I'm gonna do a little more because I scraped all that off with that little boogie. That'll do. That'll do. All right, so we're gonna Stick this in our water, and I'm gonna clean this off too, because this is going to be my sculpting blade. Okay, so we're gonna let this dry. Okay, I'm gonna put it aside, because I already baked another cake. We're gonna put this aside. This is our background. Now, don't forget, before you start the top, go ahead and just do your uh, sides in that dark navy color, the deep midnight, so you don't have to worry about the sides at this point. Now we got one finished. And I wanna show you what I did. So this one doesn't have quite as much white in the middle. Um, I'm just gonna have to live with that. And um, let's see, I'm trying to get my stuff organized. Put my brush in here. See you later, Lou. Color. Okay, so here is what's happening. 
okay? So we have this angel wing that I sketched last year, okay? And so what we're gonna do is trace this, and then we're gonna flip it and trace it again on the other side so that they're equal and nice. And uh, yeah, this is, um, the, the first one was a 10 by 20, but my piece that I'm doing is a 12 by 24. And so that I make sure my wings are equally spaced and uh, top to bottom and left to right, I put, I know, my chair is snapping. <laughs> uh, what I'm gonna do is I've added a couple of pieces of tape so that I can butt my, paper, my tracer right up against that tape and right to the edge of the uh, canvas on the left side so that when I flip it, I'll do that again, right to the edge, right at the top of the tape so that they are the same, except, you know, if I get them uh, off when I start sculpting, okay? So I've already traced this side, so we're gonna flip it and trace the other side. So I'm gonna take that off real quick. So I'm gonna flip it. I'm gonna line it up with my tape down here at the bottom and to the edge of the canvas. Let's see. Right there. So it's nice and straight and we don't have to worry. So I'm gonna put my tape back up here to keep it in place. And I have white tracing paper. Now this is part of um, what I got at from a um, sewing pack from Walmart. It's like a little sewing pack that had, you know, like um, 10 or 12 different colors in it. I gotta figure out which side is which. Okay, so I'm gonna just tuck it under here and all I'm gonna trace really is the outline and maybe a couple of the uh, feathers because there's just no point in tracing the whole thing. So I'll start here. Use my little stylus, and I am gonna trace just that top edge. Let me scooch it over. And then I'll just add a couple of lines because those aren't gonna be perfect. And we'll come down here and do a couple here too. All right, so that has traced, uh, given me a line to go by so that I do a good job when we start sculpting. So let me get this tape off here and stick to everything in my studio. Now I'm using, um, uh, I'm using the heavy body acrylic from um, Hobby Lobby to sculpt my wings, okay? And it's gonna take a good bit. I should probably use the Venetian plaster, but I'm gonna use this because I wanna sprinkle something in it. So, oh, it's not even open yet. Let's see. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Gina. Thank you, love. I would have figured that out when I started sculpting, wouldn't I? <laughs> Keep me on my toes, girl. Keep me on my toes. Okay, so we're gonna squirt some of this out. Might as well just squirt it from here. I don't know why. I've got 16 plates. It's gonna take a good bit, and I'll probably need more than that. But we shall see. Okay, so now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on the inside of my angel wing, okay? And here's, here's why. If I start on the inside and just fill that in, when I start doing the tips, I can pull that in and you're layering from the tip to the uh, inside of the angel wing, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and just lay out right up to my tracer line and I'm not even gonna try to be perfect, don't, don't try to be perfect at everything. I'm gonna let it be a little jaggedy. I kinda dig that. 
So I'm just gonna lay out that center of that wing. I'm gonna let some of that blue show through too. Let's see here. Just fill in. And again, I'm just laying the paint on. I'm not scraping it off, okay? I'm just barely touching the surface to lay that paint onto my canvas. I'm not going like that. I'm kind of, it's like when you want a lot of peanut butter on your peanut butter sandwich, you just lay it out, okay? So now I'm gonna turn it this way a little because I wanna pull my wings in towards the center, all right? So I'm gonna load my palette knife, I'm gonna start at the tip and pull it towards myself. All the way down, and then we're gonna layer on top of that. So load your knife, lay it down, and just pull it towards the middle. We're gonna go all the way down, and then we're gonna do another quick layer. My hands are so shaky today, y'all. The arthritis is real. So just keep adding them Kind of follow in your template. I'll we'll turn it a little. Can y'all see that still? Ooh, I'm having a hot flash, ladies. Who wants to join me? Okay, so that is our first layer of feathers. So what I'm gonna do now is come back and do it again, but I'm gonna start like right here and pull it in. So you're gonna start on the, like an inch or so into the wing. And just lay it out and pull it towards the middle. Pull it towards the middle. This toe jazz is going to need more. The hardest part in doing wings like this is consistency from your left wing to your right wing. So don't stress too much about that because nothing in the world that is nature made is symmetrical. Not that. Okay, we're gonna do one more row. I'm just gonna take it up. And I'm gonna kind of blend into my wing too. So it has a little texture and I'll show you that close up. So I'm, I don't know if you're seeing it, but I'm kind of curving my knife with the shape of that wing. And you can do as many layers as you want of this. I'm gonna stop around here. I may just come in with my knife and futz a little. Let me fix this little spot.
all right? So there's one wing. Let me turn it around so you can kind of see the whole thing. And I want you to notice that at the top of the wing, I see how it's kind of spotty. I'm leaving that. I like it. It looks, I, I just like the way it looks. It's fine to me, okay? So now let me get the other side. I have to wait till my camera catches up so I can make sure I can see the other side. Okay, I'm gonna put some more on my plate and we're gonna do the same thing. Yeah, wait, Tracy, wait till it goes on sale half price. Cause you know, at least once a month it does. So I'm gonna again do the inside of my wing before I do my tips, okay? So we're gonna just go kinda close to the edge and you're just laying out your peanut butter. <clears throat> I gotta turn it so that I can uh, see what I'm doing. All right, I'm gonna turn it this way for a sec. I know I'm going all over the place, but it's hard. If you've painted it at all, you know how hard it is. If you're right-handed, it's hard to do the left side and vice versa. Okay, so we got that done. So now we're gonna twist it again. And we are gonna work on the feathers on this side. Same application. So we're just gonna scoop up on the back of your knife, start at the tip and bring it very gently into your wing. Do it. And don't worry about the lines between the first layer because you're gonna correct those with the second layer, okay? Just bring it in. You start pulling it in a little. See, I have those big gaps. We're not gonna worry about that yet. I wanna look at the whole thing though. Start bringing it in. Make sure you can see that. Quiet. I hold my mouth right. It's hard to concentrate and chitty chat. Okay, so I'm gonna get a little bit more on my plate. We're gonna do our second layer. So we're just gonna scrape it up just like we have been. Just get some on the bottom of your knife. We're gonna come in between the originals, okay? So those two pieces, or those two little feathers, we're gonna come in the middle of that and bring it around. In the middle and bring it around, and bring it around. Bring it around. That was excessive. Oh, I scraped my fingernail across it. <laughs> I 
me get that off. All right, we'll get in here, bring it around. Yeah, this is definitely gonna take a hot minute to dry. So what we'll do is come back on Friday. I'll post what time. We'll come back on Friday and finish it. Well, that'll give it some hot minutes to dry. All right, we're gonna do one more quick, like right there, about two inches, two and a half inches in. Just layer in those feathers. Knew I was gonna have to have some more. I'm gonna fill that in a little bit. That's giving me fits. There's where I scrape my fingernail across. Let me get just a little bit more. Pretty happy with this. I think I need to texture up this side a little. It doesn't have quite as much texture over here, so we're gonna mess with it just a little bit. It's a little smoother. So we want it to be as close as possible without going over. <laughs> All right, a little bit more, like right here. And while this is still wet, you can go in and just kind of mess with, you know, if you want to just flatten and make a few more faux wings or feathers, just kind of pull your knife through it. Lord, this hot flash is killing me. And I think we're voila. So it's just that simple. So those are our wings. Let me see if I can. And I used um, the Titanium White Master's Touch, that's that thick paint, to create that. Let me see if I can show you. So that's our wings. And, uh, okay. So today, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna uh, pin in our faith. I've already uh, traced it, and all I did, guys, was I went to uh, Word, on my computer and uh, found a font, printed it out as big as I wanted, I added some tails to it, and then I traced it. So I don't know what font this is, um, so don't ask. <laughs> I don't remember. I just, I don't even think I looked. I just found one. I just looked until I found something. I went through like 20 fonts. And I will, for if you're a uh, Art Shattered, if you're a Shattered Circle member, I will uh, put that in the um, units if it's not already in there. So we're, what we're gonna do is we're going to do our faith. We're gonna glaze our wings with a metallic titanium gold and some blending medium. And then we're going to add a little bit of glass and resin and it's gonna be spectacular. It's gonna be so pretty. So, yeah, I like the font too, Amy. It's just very basic and kind of sweet. So let me find a really nice liner. Okay, and you guys know what a liner brush is, right? It's a long, skinny, pointy brush. This is a liner brush. So it's about a half inch and it's small and, and very tight, okay? Did I move over already? 
yeah, my, my uh, iPad, which is where I'm reading comments, is a few seconds lagged behind. So I think we're I think we're okay now. And my and my iPad also keeps telling me that Judy Bondurant is watching uh, a thousand times. So it's just repeating the same comment over and over. Okay. So what I'm gonna do? I already have. Thank you. I already have black on my palette. So I'm just gonna get my brush wet, and I'm gonna go into some of this black, and I want it to have like an inky consistency so that it flows really nicely onto the canvas. And that's a little bit um, thick still, so I add a little bit more water. I wanna get it wet until it's inky. That way it flows real nice. I think we're getting there. This has been sitting here for a few minutes, so um, gonna be a little thicker. So I wanna remind you too that if you have a friend on your Facebook list you think might enjoy our videos, if you'll just let them know we're here and we're painting beautiful things, uh, that would be awesome. The more the merrier, we like a big crowd. Yay! Yes, it would make an excellent wedding present, Pam. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm going to uh, write the word faith. You can see I already traced it on ahead of time, and uh, so we wouldn't be here for all the day. I am going to turn the canvas so I can write it easier. So let me make sure there's no drippy. So I'm just gonna use my liner brush. You could use a pen if you had, don't use a Sharpie, but you could use a paint pen to write this as well. If you are, thank you, Kim. If you are challenged in um, painting your letters. So, and I am challenged, but I'm gonna give it a whirl. Mostly because I have a little bit of arthritis in my hands because another uh, old woman traits. Oh, I'll definitely do that, Janet. I'm gonna test drive everything on the market. So we're going to just add our letters. I'm terrible at this because my hands are a little shaky, but we're gonna do our best to make it look beautiful. All right. I think I need a little bit more water. Thank you for the sprinkles. Let's see if we can't, let's have a contest and see if we can't get our viewers up to 200. We have 113 right now. Let's get her up to two. All right, I'm gonna just continue just going right along my tracer lines. I got a little fat right there, so I'm gonna fatten that line up a little bit. Going back into my black. Oh, I'm getting a big one because I haul things around. You know, I haul furniture, art pieces. I, my mother has a small SUV. It's like a compact or a, I forget what they call them. And I, it's like so low to the ground and I'm not used to all that. So I'm definitely getting something with some, some size to it. Thank you for the sprinkles, Nancy. So let me see. That was a big blob of paint I just applied. I'm gonna be in trouble there. Let me see if I can't spread it out a little. So just real slow. Don't be afraid to stop and start. I'm terrible at lettering, so this is kind of how I have to letter. A lot of people, like my friend Casey, who teaches lettering, she can just take a paint pen and just boom, boom, boom write it out and I'm terrible. Mine would be like going down the pa going down the page or crooked or you know all jaggedy. I'd be making a hot mess. Thank you for the sprinkles. Mine would be a hot mess and I would be so sad. So I know myself well enough to know I can't do it, so I don't even try. So let's do our H. And then we're gonna take our the tail of our H all the way down into a curve, okay? So I'm gonna load that brush up really good. I'm gonna start there again, and we're just gonna drag 
I had to pick up, drag. I can't see what I'm doing. My own head's, my own hand's in my way. All the way down, okay? I need to hit my F a little bit. Thank you, Lisa. I need to hit my F just a little bit to fix the F. Connect it there. And I think that I'm happy with that. Pretty happy. Can you see my uh, hairline? <laughs> Do y'all see my uh, dark roots? So let's turn it back this way. So that is what this is going to look like, okay? So we have the wings with the faith right in the center. And next we're going to glaze our wings so that, oh, I do have to dot my eye, don't I? My goodness. Thank you. Thank you for watching out for me. <laughs> Let's see, where's my black? You dip it in. Dot your eye. Well, that was terrible. Hang on, let's try it again. I'm doing it just with the end of my paintbrush. So there we go. I dotted. <laughs> oh, wrong way. Okay, so now we are going to add, oh, uh, did, we, did we go away for a second? The internet here is so bad. Are we back? Somebody give me some uh, comments or some hearts or whatever and let me know we're back. I don't want to start again, unless I know. <clears throat> Thank you, Elaine. Thank you for the blessings. Okay, so we're back. Okay, so we went away for a minute because my even my iPad went away. So just for a split second. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get a clean plate, and I am using... Anita's metallic titanium gold. It's kind of a champagne color. It's not really a gold. It's kind of a cross between gold and silver. So I'm gonna shake that up. And I'm also going to use Liquitex slow dry blending medium. Now we use this as like a glaze or a, a retardant. It, uh, it keeps the paint from drying really fast so that we can brush it on and then wipe it back off and, um, and, it, and keep the translucency of the color. Does that make sense? So I'm gonna put about a half dollar size on my plate of the glaze. And I am going to put about a quarter size of, maybe less, maybe a nickel, of the uh, titanium. And then I'm going to mix it up with my paintbrush. Did I never leave? Mine went away. Go, Veronica! Yay! Don't it feel good to sell? How exciting. So I'm going to blend this all together. And I want to make sure, before I get started, I want to make sure of two things. One is that I have enough color, and two is that I have enough glaze. Because what I don't want to do is get it on here, and then it won't come off because I don't have enough of the glazing medium. So I'm, and I have a little piece of t-shirt cloth. So I'm going to just do a quick little test right here. And wipe, and it, it's good. Okay, so it, you can see that the color's good and you can, it, because it covers really nicely, but you can also tell that there's enough glazing medium because it, you leave it there for a few seconds, then you take your t-shirt and you rub lightly, rub it off, and it leaves a very sheer glaze of color on your piece. So that's kind of how you know. So what I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna try to stay out of that, it's still wet. I'm gonna really quickly add this color to my wing, and then we're gonna just wipe it off. And it's gonna give it a little bit of a champagne gold uh, tint without it being totally gold. It's a very translucent um, color. And it's gonna just help the uh, feathers kind of stand out off the page, off the page, stand out off the canvas so that you can actually see the texture of the piece. Okay, so it's all covered. So now what I'm gonna do is take my t-shirt cloth, okay? And I'm gonna start at the tips 
And I'm just gonna brush or use my t-shirt to pull the glaze towards the center, okay? You don't wanna go back and forth because then you're wiping things off, okay? You just wanna go in one direction. Go in one direction. That leaves it pulled into the crevices and gives your uh, wing uh, that color. So see how nice that is compared to it just being plain white? And it just makes it pop more. It makes it kind of stand out and gives it more texture and dimension. And it was just that quick. So brush on. You don't want to leave it on for like 10 minutes because it's going to, because of the plaster, it's going to grab. Okay, it's going to grab a hold and you're going to have trouble uh, getting it off. So don't dilly-dally, just get it on and then wipe it off. The longer you wait, the harder it's going to be to get off your canvas. I got, I got a little crazy there. So we're gonna just get it on these wings. And whatever glazing medium you have, I know that if you're in my group, you probably have a couple of different options. You may have aqua cream, you may have uh, this glazing medium, whatever. It's, as long as it's a, something that thins your paint and keeps it sheer, you can use it, okay? So I'm gonna do the same thing, move that. I'm gonna just pull towards the center in one direction. And that helps the paint kind of grab into any of the texture and pull into the crevices. So, I think that looks pretty good. I might have, oops, hang on, dropped it. A little bit here. So I'm pretty happy with that. That looks good. And it's metallic. I know you probably can't see it as well from where you're sitting, but it is a metallic. And so it does have a glisten to it. And once we do, thank you, uh, Sue. Thank you uh, for the sprinkles. Once we add our glass and then add our resin, it's really gonna make that metallic pop and look really pretty. So let me clean this up because now we're gonna get ready to add our glass and resin. I am going to elevate my canvas. One little thing on each side so that if we have any drippage, it's not gonna stick my canvas to my work surface. And real quick, I need to blow dry. Thank you, Amy. I need to blow dry the word faith because it's still wet right there. So give me two seconds. And if you, if you're, if you have your uh, computer turned up really loud, you might wanna turn it down a little because I'm about to turn this blow dryer on just for like 10 or 15 seconds and it might be loud. So. Be prepared for that. Ready, set, go. I just want to make sure it's good and dry before we add resin. unplug this so I can plug the phone back in so we don't want it to die. And we'll give this a few seconds. Hey, Tracy. We'll give this a few seconds to cool off. And what I'm using, let me scoot this back over again. I'm off center. My phone is off center. So we'll scoot that back over into view. Let's make sure it's there. So I have my blocks under. Okay, so the glass we're using, I bought at Michael's, okay? This is, um, it's called Ashland Decorative Filler. It's in the floral department where the vase filler stuff is. 
It is very similar to the stuff I sell on my website. It's just smaller. It's just small itty bitty pieces. So I love to use this when I'm using, when I'm making smaller pieces or just when I want something really subtle. So what I'm gonna do is just add some of this and I want it to be really organic, okay? I don't want it to just be like a big hard line of glass. I want it to be really organic, so, and some of it, let me get it some in my hand. I know I do too. Uh, some of it out towards the tips of the wings. Maybe even a few in the middle, not this great big one though. We won't be too terribly particular about where they land. So that's pretty good for that side. Now let's do this side. I know, I was so sad for a period of time. It like disappeared and you couldn't hardly find it, but it's back. And I bought all they had at my Michaels the other day. I'm gonna break up these bigger pieces. And when if they, if they come in like bigger little pieces like this, bigger little, just pinch it with your hand and it'll break can pinch it like this piece right here that's big. Just squeeze it and it'll break into smaller bits. Okay, so let me get some in my hand. And I wanna spread it out up here a little, but not with these bigger pieces. What is going on with the big ones? It's got some doozies. So I'm gonna let some come out this way. Look at that in my, I hear ya. Me too, Pam, but you know, I'm always, when things start disappearing, it freaks me out. It's like, no, I need it. I need all of it. Buy all the things. <laughs> because, I, you know, there are certain things that I use all the time, and when they start disappearing, I freak out. I have it in every color too, every color available. I don't like that piece. It's shaped like a stick. All right, and I'm gonna just let some of this fall in the middle too. I think I like this. Let me stand up and kind of look down and see what it's doing. The, the uh, video really doesn't do it justice. So uh, always remember when I do a piece like this, uh, tomorrow when it's dry, I will post the finished pick and it'll have, um, you know, I'll take it out in the sunshine where you can really see the detail because right now you cannot see how fantastic it is. All right, so that's all it was. It was a handful. It was probably about a third of a jar. And these jars are like, I don't know, they're like $6.99, I think. And so I used maybe a third of that little jar of um, glass. So now we're gonna do resin. We're gonna do the resin. Isn't that pretty, Annette? Oh my goodness, so pretty. So I'm gonna mix some resin now. So I have a little cup that I'm gonna mix. I'm gonna mix, I don't really think I need a lot, but I have a couple of things to resin. So I'm gonna mix four ounces, but I know that is way too much for this project. So once we get this project poured, I will tell you exactly how much that I use so that you will know, and this is a 10 by 20, okay? So that's all dry. I'm gonna put my little gloves on. Yes, yeah, Sandy, don't blame me, isn't it cute? I did one about a year and a half ago. It was a pearl background. And we used, um, we painted it, and then we used some of the um, glitter plaster, the Envy plaster. But this client that I'm doing this particular one for, um, her was that one wasn't budget friendly for her. So we are uh, scaling back some of the product usage so that she can afford it. And uh, so we we're, we're gonna do. Um, this version, and she wanted not to have a pearl background either. It was more of a, a blue background. So where's my resin? Somebody stole my resin from me. Hang on, I found it. Resin, and I use art resin. Let me grab my 
torch while I'm at it. Let's see, I love the glass like that so you can, yes, you can. Yes, this glass is kind of champagne colored. It's clear on one side and mirrored champagne on the other. So it's gonna be translucent once the resin goes on and you'll still be able to see all the prettiness. Okay, so I am going to pour, this is art resin made specifically for um, art. And it's made in the USA, no BPA, no VOCs, no COVs. It is the best resin, in my opinion, for art on the market. I'm sure other people have different opinions, but that's mine. So I'm gonna pour two ounces of the hardener. It's a 50-50 mix. So we're gonna do two ounces of hardener. And if you're new, do not use one cup. You're gonna pour in two cups, not one. But I've been doing this for about 10 years and I feel pretty confident about my ability. So what you would do is pour this part in one cup, however much you're doing. I'm doing two ounces, so you would, be, you would do two ounces in one cup of the hardener. Set it aside. Then you're gonna do two ounces of resin in another cup, okay? So, and then you would mix them together. I have to do this slowly because it kind of, it's like molasses. You think you just have a little and suddenly it's covering your whole plate. Right, also don't pour and mix on your canvas like me because you might drip and make a mess. And you know, I'm trying to stay in camera range and I do this all the time. <laughs> and I get fussed at too, don't I Lou? For mixing on my canvas, I make all the people nervous. <laughs> All right, so I'm pouring just a little bit of the second part at a time because it takes a few seconds for, uh, is Kendall here? Hey, Kendall. It takes a few seconds for it to rise up to the measurement line and I don't want it to go over. So I usually pour just a little bit at a time, at a time and uh, make sure it doesn't go over. So we got four ounces, two ounces of hardener, two ounces of resin. And I have a tool somewhere. What did I do with it? Oh, this is a silicone makeup applicator. And we're gonna use this to mix our resin because it's reusable and it saves money on sticks or straws or whatever else you would use. Hey, love bug, how are you, girl? So I'm gonna mix this. You have to mix it for three minutes. So uh, Catherine, or you or Rima, thank you, Catherine. Uh, I'm gonna mix this for three minutes and we'll chat. You can ask me questions while I'm mixing if you have a question about what we're doing. But I'm mixing very slowly. I want you to pay attention to that. Hey, Patricia. I'm mixing slowly. You don't want to whip it and beat it to death because um, that incorporates a lot of bubbles and you don't want a lot of bubbles in your resin. Okay, so mix slowly, scrape the bottom, scrape the sides, make sure you got it mixed really well and we're gonna do it for three minutes. Yes, Dana, you'll be able to come back and watch this video anytime you want, okay? It will always be here. As long as Facebook lets me have this page. If you were jazzing it up more, what would you add? Oh, uh, I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe a little gold to the background, you know? Um, maybe a little more glass, maybe a little more color on the wings than what I did. Uh, would jazz it up a little too. But yeah, uh, putting some of the metallic in the background would really jazz it up, I think. Okay? So mixing resin is like mixing cake batter. You know how when you pour powder into a bowl and then you add your liquid ingredients and you stir and stir and stir and you think you got it all mixed and then when you dump it out in the cake pan, there's always a little blob of powdered mix on the side. That's what you want to avoid, okay? That's why you're gonna mix for three minutes. Yes, silver would be awesome. You're gonna mix for three minutes. Make sure you scrape the bottom, scrape your sides so that you don't have camp, dry camp, pancake batter on, or cake batter on the side of your bowl. Okay, so just stir, stir, stir. Don't beat it to death. Anybody have a question? So I'm super excited. We are starting a challenge 
um, a rain boots and sunflower challenge in a couple of weeks. It's a $10 challenge. Um, and it's a, it's Facebook live over the course of four days. We t walk you step by step through creating a, uh, an art piece with rain boots and sunflowers. And it's going to be really fun. We're going to be sh uh, popping that in here very soon. And then after that, we are going to be opening the Shattered Circle for new members, and we have a great surprise for you guys when we do that as well. Diana, I'm interested in the challenge you're having next month, so I need to join the Inner Circle. The uh, challenge is a standalone art project, Diana. You do not have to join the Shattered Circle to do the challenge, okay? So if you're not a member of the Shattered Circle, you can just pay the $10, and take the challenge by itself. <clears throat> Judy, the resin, they sell this resin at Hobby Lobby, but you can also get it online at artresin.com or Amazon, just like Pam said. Any foil, I'm sure Dana, we're gonna have some foil. Actually, we're doing a foil project in the Shattered Circle in April. We're gonna have, be using foil on um, some shoes. Not real shoes, painted shoes. <laughs> but yeah, if, we, if you are not a member and want a foil project for uh, this page, just let me know and I can, I can do something. I'm always trying to figure out what I'm gonna do next in this group, so I'd love to do that. Yeah, Diane, I, well, I think we're gonna open it up um, next week for, for you to purchase. So just keep your eye open. It's $10, and I'll show you guys the um, finished piece once we resin this. Okay, the resin, Sandy, you can use the resin for, or you can, um, the, the least, um, thank you, Catherine, the smallest, the smaller batch you mix, the longer open time you have with the resin, but it's usually around 30 or 40 minutes. It'll start, you'll know, because it'll start getting sticky and you won't be able to kind of move it very much, but you got about 30 or 40 minutes to, um, resin your projects, and then it's gonna start getting hot and sticky. But keep in mind too, the more you mix it once, the hotter and the faster it's gonna get sticky. So try to mix in small amounts. So I'm gonna go ahead and resin. I am just gonna start with my glass and then work my way out. So I'm just gonna drizzle with my little stir stick. Thank you, Janie. I'm just gonna, hey, Mad. I'm gonna drizzle with my stir stick. And I'm trying to be methodical with my application of resin over the glass because you don't wanna miss any spots. So you wanna but like just work left to right or top to bottom so that you are ensured that you've covered everything. Hey, Patty. So, I got a lot of little bits of glass, like towards the end, so it's going to take me a little bit longer because I want to make sure all those bits are covered. So, the, what the resin does is it hits the glass and then it, you know, goes down over the glass, spreads around, and then glues it to the surface. Hey, Joyce, how are you? We want to make sure and hit every little piece. And then I'll come back when I'm done with the glass and fill in these spots with my hands. Okay, so we're going to move to this side. Let me get these little center pieces. And again, I'm going to start with my glass. I think I'm gonna go from bottom to top, so we'll just start here and move upward. John says, I missed part. I saw you, I watch, I view, now I'm deaf. I wish you, I, I wish I ask a question, but no capital 
Oh no, oh no. Um, can somebody answer John's question? Um, type out the answer. Can you uh, tag him and answer his question for him, Catherine, or one of my girls? Because he can't hear me. So if uh, somebody can answer him and give him some help, that would be very kind. Because we don't have closed caption. So I'm gonna get my little bits of glass. Cover those little bits. And then we'll get the um, flat surface when we're done with that. So tell me guys, is the lighting okay here? Um, you know, I'm, I'm really struggling with getting enough light and the proper um, kind of light in the studio. And it's hard for me to know unless I'm live. Thank you guys for helping John, y'all are very sweet. So I am gonna now take my resin and remind me not to forget to tell you how much we used. I am going to just sprinkle it around on the flat portions so that I can spread it all over the entire art piece. All right, let's see if that's enough. So I'm gonna use my hands because this is textured. And uh, what do glue name of cup paint for silver? Oh, um, th somebody tell him the silver is Anita's titanium gold metallic. And what we put with it was Liquitex slow dry blending medium. I just put my elbow in resin, I think. So, I am going to just use my finger and go in between all these little dibbles of glass I have over here where they're kind of spread out and sporadic. I'm just going to use my hand to kind of go in between those little glass bits. Somebody tell John as well that if he would like to email me at info at artshatter.com and ask me any questions. If you guys can't answer, uh, I will try to help him to the best of my ability. So now I'm gonna just spread it on that flat surface. Make sure we're nice and covered. And if you look at your piece kind of at an angle, you can uh, see, um, I'll send him a picture. Uh, you can see if you've missed a spot because it'll be, it won't be as shiny, it'll be kind of matte. So kind of look at your piece like across um, at, a, at an angle and you'll be able to see any skippies that you missed. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Spread it out. I'm gonna get those pieces in the middle. Make sure it's all covered nicely. Oops, I have a big skip right there. I'm gonna use, that was a big hole, completely missed. Thank you guys for helping John. I guess I need to look into closed caption. Don't really think about it, which is kind of rude of me. So I'm gonna continue. I need a little bit more. Oh, that's a great idea using a flashlight. Okay, I'm all covered now, I think. I'm gonna take a peek at it. I'm gonna try not to get my hair in there. 
because uh, even though one of my girls sent me some hair ties, I didn't use it. Okay, so I'm gonna look at it, looking at it at an angle. It's kind of hard because I got all these lights shining down on it, so you guys can see. But I'm gonna make sure everything's got resin. And I think we're good. I think we are golden. Uh, so I'm gonna take these off, okay? Well, that's a great idea, Pam. Okay, take your gloves off, toss them away. And anytime you're doing an art piece, because of the mixing, you are incorporating bubbles into, uh, air bubbles into the resin. So what I like to do is take a small torch, or you can use a heat gun, or a hair dryer, or a, a, like a little creme brulee torch. And <clears throat> can you put the resin down and then add glass? If you do, um, Absolutely, you can put the resin down, add glass, and then resin it again. But resin is pricey, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that unless it was just an accident. So I'm gonna use my torch to just run over my art piece just real quick. You wanna do it fast, you don't wanna do it slow. You don't wanna keep, you stop your hand. You wanna keep your hand moving, and you don't want your flame to actually touch your art piece, because it will burn the resin. Oh, I think Becky adding pearls to that would be fantastical. I think it would be wonderful. Yeah, that would be a waste of resin. Okay, so this is done. I think it's fantastic.